In trade, barter derived from baritor is a system of exchange where participants in a transaction directly exchange goods or services for other goods or services without using a medium of exchange, such as money. Economists distinguish barter from gift economies in many ways. Barter, for example, features immediate reciprocal exchange, not delayed in time. Barter usually takes place on a bilateral basis, but may be multilateral, i.e., mediated through a trade exchange. In most developed countries, barter usually only exists parallel to monetary systems to a very limited extent. Market actors use barter as a replacement for money as the method of exchange in times of monetary crisis, such as when currency becomes unstable e.g., hyperinflation or a deflationary spiral or simply unavailable for conducting commerce. Economists since the times of Adam Smith (1723–1790), looking at non-specific pre-modern societies as examples, have used the inefficiency of barter to explain the emergence of money, of the economy, and hence of the discipline of economics itself. However, ethnographic studies have shown that no present or past society has used barter without any other medium of exchange or measurement, nor have anthropologists found evidence that money emerged from barter, instead finding that gift-giving credit extended on a personal basis with an interpersonal balance maintained over the long term was the most usual means of exchange of goods and services. Economic theory Adam Smith on the origin of money Adam Smith, the father of modern economics, sought to demonstrate that markets and economies pre-existed the state, and hence should be free of government regulation. He argued against conventional wisdom that money was not the creation of governments. Markets emerged, in his view, out of the division of labor, by which individuals began to specialize in specific crafts and hence had to depend on others for subsistence goods. These goods were first exchanged by barter. Specialization depended on trade, but was hindered by the double coincidence of wants, which barter requires, i.e., for the exchange to occur, each participant must want what the other has. To complete this hypothetical history, craftsmen would stockpile one particular good, be it salt or metal, that they thought no one would refuse. This is the origin of money according to Smith. Money, as a universally desired medium of exchange, allows each half of the transaction to be separated. Barter is characterized in Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations by a disparaging vocabulary, higgling, haggling, swapping, dickering. It has also been characterized as negative reciprocity, or selfish profiteering. Anthropologists have argued, in contrast, that when something resembling barter does occur in stateless societies it is almost always between strangers." Barter occurred between strangers, not fellow villagers, and hence cannot be used to naturalistically explain the origin of money without the state. Since most people engaged in trade knew each other, exchange was fostered through the extension of credit. Marcel Moss, author of The Gift, argued that the first economic contracts were to not act in one's economic self-interest, and that before money, exchange was fostered through the processes of reciprocity and redistribution, not barter. Everyday exchange relations in such societies are characterized by generalized reciprocity, or a non-calculative familial communism, where each takes according to their needs, and gives as they have. Advantages Since direct barter does not require payment in money, it can be utilized when money is in short supply, when there is little information about the credit worthiness of trade partners, or when there is a lack of trust between those trading. Barter is an option to those who cannot afford to store their small supply of wealth in money, especially in hyperinflation situations where money devalues quickly. Limitations The limitations of barter are often explained in terms of its inefficiencies in facilitating exchange in comparison to money. It is said that barter is inefficient because there needs to be a double coincidence of wants for barter to occur between two parties, both parties need to have what the other wants. There is no common measure of value. In a monetary economy, money plays the role of a measure of value of all goods, so their values can be assessed against each other, this role may be absent in a barter economy. Indivisibility of certain goods 
If a person wants to buy a certain amount of another's goods, but only has for payment one indivisible unit of another good which is worth more than what the person wants to obtain, a barter transaction cannot occur. Lack of standards for deferred payments This is related to the absence of a common measure of value, although if the debt is denominated in units of the good that will eventually be used in payment, it is not a problem. Difficulty in storing wealth if a society relies exclusively on perishable goods, storing wealth for the future may be impractical. However, some barter economies rely on durable goods like sheep or cattle for this purpose. History Silent trade Other anthropologists have questioned whether barter is typically between total Strangers, a form of barter known as silent trade. Silent trade, also called silent barter, dumb barter, dumb, here used in its old meaning of mute, or depot trade, is a method by which traders who cannot speak each other's language can trade without talking. However, Benjamin Orlove has shown that while barter occurs through silent trade between strangers, it also occurs in commercial markets as well. Because barter is a difficult way of conducting trade, it will occur only where there are strong institutional constraints on the use of money or where the barter symbolically denotes a special social relationship and is used in well-defined conditions. To sum up, multipurpose money in markets is like lubrication for machines, necessary for the most efficient function, but not necessary for the existence of the market itself. In his analysis of barter between coastal and inland villages in the Trobriand Islands, Keith Hart highlighted the difference between highly ceremonial gift exchange between community leaders, and the barter that occurs between individual households. The haggling that takes place between strangers is possible because of the larger temporary political order established by the gift exchanges of leaders. From this he concludes that barter is an atomized interaction predicated upon the presence of society i.e. that social order established by gift exchange, and not typical between complete strangers. <laughs> Times of monetary crisis As Orlov noted, barter may occur in commercial economies, usually during periods of monetary crisis. During such a crisis, currency may be in short supply, or highly devalued through hyperinflation. In such cases, money ceases to be the universal medium of exchange or standard of value. Money may be in such short supply that it becomes an item of barter itself rather than the means of exchange. Barter may also occur when people cannot afford to keep money as when hyperinflation quickly devalues it. An example of this would be during the crisis in Bolivarian Venezuela, when Venezuelans resorted to bartering as a result of hyperinflation. Topic: <laughs> Exchanges Economic historian Karl Polanyi has argued that where barter is widespread, and cash supplies limited, barter is aided by the use of credit, brokerage, and money as a unit of account i.e. used to price items. All of these strategies are found in ancient economies including Ptolemaic Egypt. They are also the basis for more recent barter exchange systems. While one to one bartering is practiced between individuals and businesses on an informal basis, organized barter exchanges have developed to conduct third party bartering, which helps overcome some of the limitations of barter. A barter exchange operates as a broker and bank in which each participating member has an account that is debited when purchases are made, and credited when sales are made. Modern barter and trade has evolved considerably to become an effective method of increasing sales, conserving cash, moving inventory, and making use of excess production capacity for businesses around the world. Businesses in a barter earn trade credits instead of cash that are deposited into their account. They then have the ability to purchase goods and services from other members utilizing their trade credits, they are not obligated to purchase from those whom they sold to, and vice versa. The exchange plays an important role because they provide the record-keeping, brokering expertise and monthly statements to each member. Commercial exchanges make money by charging a commission on each transaction either all on the buy side, all on the sell side, or a combination of both. Transaction fees typically run between 8 and 15%. Throughout the 18th century, retailers began to abandon the prevailing system of bartering. 
Retailers operating out of the Palais complex in Paris, France were among the first in Europe to abandon the bartering, and adopt fixed prices thereby sparing their clientele the hassle of bartering. The Palais retailers stocked luxury goods that appealed to the wealthy elite and upper middle classes. Stores were fitted with long glass exterior windows which allowed the emerging middle classes to window shop and indulge in fantasies, even when they may not have been able to afford the high retail prices. Thus, the Palais Royal became one of the first examples of a new style of shopping arcade, which adopted the trappings of a sophisticated, modern shopping complex and also changed pricing structures, for both the aristocracy and the middle classes. <laughs> Utopian socialism The Owenite socialists in Britain and the United States in the 1830s were the first to attempt to organize barter exchanges. Owenism developed a «theory of equitable exchange» as a critique of the exploitative wage relationship between capitalist and labourer, by which all profit accrued to the capitalist. To counteract the uneven playing field between employers and employed, they proposed schemes of labor notes based on labor time, thus institutionalizing Owen's demand that human labor, not money, be made the standard of value." This alternate currency eliminated price variability between markets, as well as the role of merchants who bought low and sold high. The system arose in a period where paper currency was an innovation. Paper currency was an IOU circulated by a bank a promise to pay, not a payment in itself. Both merchants and an unstable paper currency created difficulties for direct producers. An alternate currency, denominated in labor time, would prevent profit taking by middlemen. All goods exchanged would be priced only in terms of the amount of labor that went into them as expressed in the maxim cost the limit of price. It became the basis of exchanges in London, and in America, where the idea was implemented at the New Harmony Communal Settlement by Josiah Warren in 1826, and in his Cincinnati Time Store in 1827. Warren ideas were adopted by other Owenites and currency reformers, even though the labor exchanges were relatively short-lived. In England, about 30 to 40 cooperative societies sent their surplus goods to an exchange bazaar for direct barter in London, which later adopted a similar labour note. The British Association for Promoting Cooperative Knowledge established an «equitable labour exchange» in 1830. This was expanded as the National Equitable Labour Exchange in 1832 on Gray's Inn Road in London. These efforts became the basis of the British cooperative movement of the 1840s. In 1848, the socialist and first self-designated anarchist Pierre Joseph Proudhon postulated a system of time chits. In 1875, Karl Marx wrote of «labour certificates» in his critique of the Gotha programme of a certificate from society that the laborer has furnished such and such an amount of labor which can be used to draw from the social stock of means of consumption as much as costs the same amount of labor topic 20th century experiments the first exchange system was the swiss wir bank it was founded in 1934 as a result of currency shortages after the stock market crash of 1929. WIR is both an abbreviation of Wirtschaftsring economic circle and the word for we in German, reminding participants that the economic circle is also a community. In Spain, particularly the Catalonia region, there is a growing number of exchange markets. These barter markets or swap meets work without money. Participants bring things they do not need and exchange them for the unwanted goods of another participant. Swapping among three parties often helps satisfy tastes when trying to get around the rule that money is not allowed. Michael Linton originated the term, local exchange trading system, lets, in 1983 and for a time ran the Comox Valley Let Systems in Courtenay, British Columbia. Let's networks use interest free local credit so direct swaps do not need to be made. For instance, a member may earn credit by doing childcare for one person and spend it later on carpentry with another person in the same network. In LETS, unlike other local currencies, no script is issued, but rather transactions are recorded in a central location open to all members. As credit is issued by the network members, for the benefit of the members themselves, LETS are considered mutual credit systems. Modern developments 
According to the International Reciprocal Trade Association, the industry trade body, more than 450,000 businesses transacted $10 billion globally in 2008 and officials expect trade volume to grow by 15% in 2009. It is estimated that over 450,000 businesses in the United States were involved in barter exchange activities in 2010. There are approximately 400 commercial and corporate barter companies serving all parts of the world. There are many opportunities for entrepreneurs to start a barter exchange. Several major cities in the U.S. and Canada do not currently have a local barter exchange. There are two industry groups in the United States, the National Association of Trade Exchanges and the International Reciprocal Trade Association Both offer training and promote high ethical standards among their members. Moreover, each has created its own currency through which its member barter companies can trade. Nate's currency is the known as the bank and IRTA's currency is called Universal Currency .In Canada, barter continues to thrive. The largest B2B barter exchange is Tradebank, founded in 1987. P2P bartering has seen a renaissance in major Canadian cities through Buns, built as a network of Facebook groups that went on to become a standalone bartering-based app in January 2016. Within the first year, Buns accumulated over 75,000 users in over 200 cities worldwide. In the United States, the largest barter exchange and corporate trade group is International Monetary Systems, founded in 1985, now with representation in various countries. In Australia and New Zealand the largest barter exchange is BarterCard, founded in 1991, with offices in the United Kingdom, United States, Cyprus, UAE and Thailand. Corporate barter focuses on larger transactions, which is different from a traditional, retail-oriented barter exchange. Corporate barter exchanges typically use media and advertising as leverage for their larger transactions. It entails the use of a currency unit called a trade credit. The trade credit must not only be known and guaranteed, but also be valued in an amount the media and advertising could have been purchased for had the client bought it themselves contract to eliminate ambiguity and risk. Soviet bilateral trade is occasionally called barter trade because although the purchases were denominated in US dollars, the transactions were credited to an international clearing account, avoiding the use of hard cash. topic Tax implications In the United States, Carl Hess used bartering to make it harder for the IRS to seize his wages and as a form of tax resistance. Hess explained how he turned to barter in an op-ed for The New York Times in 1975. However the IRS now requires barter exchanges to be reported as per the Tax Equity and Fiscal Responsibility Act of 1982. Barter exchanges are considered taxable revenue by the IRS and must be reported on a 1099B form. According to the IRS, "...the fair market value of goods and services exchanged must be included in the income of both parties." Other countries, though, do not have the reporting requirement that the U.S. does concerning proceeds from barter transactions, but taxation is handled the same way as a cash transaction. If one barters for a profit, one pays the appropriate tax, if one generates a loss in the transaction, they have a loss. Bartering for business is also taxed accordingly as business income or business expense. Many barter exchanges require that one register as a business. <laughs> Recent developments Since the 1830s, barter in some Western market economies has been aided by exchanges which use alternative currencies based on the labor theory of value, and which are intended to prevent profit-taking by intermediaries. Examples include the Owenite Socialists, the Cincinnati Time Store, and more recently Ithaca Hours time banking and the Let's System. See also References External links Media related to barter at Wikimedia Commons. Barter. Encyclopædia Britannica, 3 11th ed., 1911.